Great Scott! The solstice goes back to the future. How's that? Not bad? Yes, Marty! <sighs> Alright, that's enough. It seems that DeLorean sees potential with one of Pontiac's all-stars. Also, Lexus shares news on what else is in store for us at Tokyo. A GTR quite literally takes a guy straight to the bank, and McLaren hits our internet rumor mill with a potential spider version of the MP4-12C. All that and, of course, Leo talks motorsports news in this week's Shakedown. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm Derek D. You're checking out Fast Lane Daily on a Thursday. It's Thursday. Woohoo! Fast Lane Daily with Derek D. Always Although we know that Pontiac Solstice and the Saturn Sky are both dead as a doornail, there could be a revival from someone you would least expect. DeLorean Motor Company is said to have purchased a Pontiac Solstice GXP for evaluation purposes and is looking into bringing back the platform. The VP of DMC, James SP, said JZD, John Zachary DeLorean, always said that the best memories of his automotive career were at Pontiac. In addition, DMC teased that they are excited about possibly putting several hundred people back to work at the Wilmington, Delaware factory, coincidentally, where I picked up my Solstice GXP last spring, as you can see right here. All I can say is my flux capacitor is fluxing, if you know what I mean. But if you're looking for a car that can go double the required 88 miles per hour for time travel, Lexus has got some good news for you. Well, it's not really news, but according to the Japanese car maker, they've got a two-door performance car that will be revealed at the 2009 Tokyo Motor Show. We wonder what that could be. Oh, that's right, that little bastard that's been teasing us in spy shots and races for the past two years, the Lexus LFA. Finally, we get to see it. It's been reported that Toyota's CEO has been to the Nürburgring recently to test the car during its final shakedown. All rumors suggest that Lexus has finalized the 4.8 liter V10 engine with 550 horsepower for the production version with a reported top speed of 218 miles per hour. Pricing has been rumored to be in the range of $225,000 to $300,000. Jeez, at that price, the car should give me a friggin' blow. What? What happened? It's a lot of money. All right, Ian, I'll put a dollar in the swear jar. Sorry. Let's move on. Okay, look, people. Yes, the Nissan GTR has a ton of gadgetry to keep you safely on the road, even when you try to get it sideways, but it isn't the magic mobile. As this one dude in Vancouver found out yesterday when he was going a little too fast and unwillingly parked his Nissan GTR into the Van City Credit Union. As you can see here, it's pretty much lodged in between two ATMs. Gives new meaning to the phrase, dude, I gotta hit the ATM. The guy driving is lucky to be alive, but since he is alive, he better get all the money out of those ATMs he can because there is extensive damage to the building, the GTR, and his, hey, look at me, I'm driving a GTR, ego. I, that's, that's funny, guys. Rachel? Yeah, you left. Okay. And then the internet rumor mill McLaren could be bringing a stripper to the club. Very nice. Hints from various sources have pointed at some rumors surrounding a spider version of the new MP4-12C. As we recently learned, production may begin shortly with sales supposedly coming to the U.S. The MP4-12C is planned to directly compete with the Ferrari F430 and Lamborghini Gallardo, and after some filings in the UK from last February, this just solidifies the possibility of it happening. We'll know more when the rumor ball is drizzopped. That means dropped in Snoop Dogg language, in case you're wondering. Next up, Leo the Suit, actually wearing a suit this week in our Motorsports Recap segment, Shakedown. And guess what? He goes off the deep end and just starts talking about chicks. It's one of those f***ing days. Swear jar! I, all right, I'll put another dollar. Jeez, here. Swear jar. Here. Take Where's that money you owe me? I, what are you talking about? The I, money I, you owe me. Leo, 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 yeah, I know. Tell me, tell me I, something I, I want to hear. I, I, we'll me. get you your money. We'll get you your money. I, this is a shakedown. This is a shakedown. And this is Shakedown. Every Thursday on Fast Lane Daily, always fresh every day, Fast Lane Daily. I have a business meeting right after we shoot, so you get the full suit look today. This is the championships edition of Shakedown as the racing seasons wind down. We could also call it the driver's balls edition, as you'll see in here. WRC, 
Sebastian Loeb mans up when it counts, wins in Spain, and closes the championship gap to only one point going to the last rally. Citroën had the course well in hand, pulled a near sweep, and wins the manufacturer's title from Ford. By the way, you know why I like the WRC? The test day is called a shakedown. In MotoGP at Isterel, Orde Lorenzo goes all ground control to Major Tom with a spaceman theme on his helmet and a one small race win, one giant leap in the championship statement, cutting Rossi's point lead from 30 to 18 with three races left. And his moonwalk, flag planting win celebration was stellar. Interstellar. None of that. Casey Stoner's return with a Q3 and a P2 proved his health issues were not for lack of stones. That's the balls tie. Rossi finished fourth and hold that thought in your head because in Formula One, Vettel marked his turf with a dominant Japan win to keep the championship fight alive. How do you say in German, I'm not dead yet. Rubens again beat Jensen Button by one spot and one point. And Button's response to all this, quote, it's nice to pick up one point and finish just behind Rubens. What? Look, I know I said in the last shakedown that one of Button's steps to the championship was just stay close to Rubens to protect the points gap. But you don't say you're happy about that. I mean, compare Jensen and his eighth place satisfaction to the MotoGP god, Valentino Rossi, who was shattered to finish fourth. To me, Button is a mutton, or whatever you call a sheep with no balls. Look, I know they only have two races to go. Button only needs four points to finish off Vettel, seven points to end hope for Rubens. But I still want my champions to be bold, not the second coming of Jacques Villeneuve, and not Kimi's version of Zombieland. You know, in the last eight races, the post-diffuser season, I call it, Jensen has been outscored by Vettel, Rubens, Kimi, and Hamilton in that order. Weber ties him with 24 points, and Weber is far from championship caliber. Look, I want my champions to want to win with passion and presence. Hey, I want Brett Favre to retire from American football and drive for Braun. But since that won't happen, since Jensen won't change, and since the drivers and team titles are all but Braun done, and since Derek's soap opera novellas can handle all the upcoming drama of Kimmy to McLaren, McLaren to its own engines, Mercedes to Braun as the works team putting German Rosberg in the car, Toyota to stay or go, and if they stay to put Rubens and Jensen in those cars, and more. Since all that, let's focus on the championship battle that maybe we should have been all along. Who's the hottest F1 driver's girlfriend, wife, or significant other of the moment? And the nominees are Mrs. Rubens Barrichello. Silvana, Mrs. Kimi Raikkonen, and former Miss Scandinavia, Jenny Dahlman, Fernando Alonso's girlfriend and pop star Raquel Del Rosario, Sebastian Vettel's girlfriend, Hannah Prater, Lewis Hamilton and Nicole Pussycat Doll Scherzinger, Timo Glock's German reality TV star, Isabella Rice, and Jensen Button's Jessica Michibata, plus Mitchie's sister, Angelica. Polls are open, let the voting begin, because frankly, after all the bent tech rules, flat out cheating, politics, and general all around BS, this may be where to find the F1 fun and balls. And I leave you with my writing candidates, the grid girls of MotoGP. Wow, good job, Leo. You really nailed all those chicks' names. You know, Formula Double D is one of my favorite racing series. Seriously. Well, that about does it for Fastlane Daily today. I'm Derek D. Remember, Facebook.com slash Fastlane Daily. We're also on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Fastlane Daily, YouTube, and you know the rest. All right, tune in tomorrow. We'll shoot the Oh, that's right. I mean, ugh. All right, cut. Next up, Leo the Suit, actually wearing a suit this week in the Motorsports segment Shakedown. Did you know that? And guess who he's talking about? Hot chicks. Hot chicks. It's just one of those what days. <laughs> All right. Yeah, pay up. <laughs>